Medicines, while often life-saving, can also be abused. No better demonstrated than in the opioid addiction pandemic sweeping parts of the globe. It's why pharmacists are guided by a code of ethics and strict regulations that have patient well-being at their centre. Pharmacists play a key role in healthcare, but as in so many sectors, money sometimes trumps ethics. Tonight, we investigate the illicit bulk sale of codeine-based cough mixtures. Used in pain relief, codeine is an opioid, but it's often used for an inexpensive high. Here's Govan again. At the center of this story is a pharmacy group. It has 10 independent retail stores and a wholesale pharmacy. It's an impressive legacy, built over two decades by a self-made man. Pharmacist and former rugby player Hannes Stradom is no stranger to success, but some say he doesn't always play by the rules. I is help mol. I sal doen wat ek al hy goed dink en vir hom reg is en nie net wende volgens die wet nie. He's like a god type figure. He thinks the law is a word that he speaks. He thinks he's untouchable. These are not just disgruntled employees. They say they've witnessed alleged wrongdoings at the Pharma Value Group. At our investigation center are illegal codeine sales, allegedly linked to Hannes Stradom's businesses. Codeine cough syrup feeds a global addiction pandemic. It's an easy and accessible high, and as we'll reveal, it's not hard to get in bulk supply for the black market if you've got the right contacts. Mr. Stradom, we'd like to speak to you about what you're doing. It's a criminal offence. This is criminal. Sorry, you're not allowed downstairs. I won't push you. How can you do this? We'll be right here waiting for you. Hannes Stradom isn't going to sit down for an interview. He says there's an ongoing forensic investigation and a legal probe into codeine-based cough syrup involving an employee who left the company in mid-2022. This man is that employee. My name is Nico Maton. I'm a registered pharmacist at the South African Pharmacy Council. I worked as a pharmacist um, in Pharma Value Traders. There's no one in Pharma Value that will stand up to whatever Mr. Stradom has instructed. I only reacted on orders from Mr. Stradom. He received the money into his accounts and sometimes he received cash money. The money he's talking about is allegedly the profit from illegal codeine sales. Deals he says Stradom knew about but now wants to pin on him. It's big business with younger addicts hooked on codeine laced cool drink concoctions. Classified as a weak opioid, Codeine essentially releases feel-good chemicals into the brain, but with off-label abuse, users can develop a tolerance that may lead to dependence. Over-the-counter codeine products are banned in at least 25 countries, but not in South Africa. Here, it's a Schedule II drug, available over-the-counter with basic restrictions. Shady players in the pharmaceutical field are shamelessly feeding the codeine black market one bottle of cough mixture at a time. We took this investigation undercover to test straight up over the counter sales. In recent weeks, we visited all 10 pharma value stores. I'm looking for the one with codeine. I'm looking for one with codeine. We didn't just get one bottle at a time from most of Hannes Stradom's pharmacies. Yeah. Like codeine and dynamite. This despite Pharma Value Management outlining the rules and training its staff, clearly stating no bulk sales are allowed. It's single item sales only. While two pharmacies didn't have stock, two others would only give the undercover buyer a single 100 milliliter bottle, as per the Schedule II medicine regulations. The other six didn't hesitate to break the law. It's clear, not all of Pharma Value's 350 staff stick to the rules. 
In a written response to us, Stradum said he intends taking disciplinary action against the staff at these stores, but demanded our evidence to do so. All of this was sold illegally. And this pharmacy empire wasn't built one spoonful of cough mixture at a time. No, we're talking hundreds of thousands of bottles distributed every year. To better understand this level of distribution, let's break it down. Stradum's operation is basically split in two. There's the wholesale division that's not open to the public and supplies pharmacies and medical practices that have dispensing licenses, often in bulk. Then there's the retail division of 10 pharma value stores that sell to the public in limited quantities and are not allowed to sell to suppliers in bulk. Since 2020, over 1.3 million units of codeine cough syrup were sold by Stradum's wholesale division, predominantly to his own pharma value stores, which he is allowed to do. But Mutana alleges not all sales go to pharmacies. 90% of that sales, of any codeine sales in pharma value, is illegal. 90% of the business is what? Is illegal bulk sales to outside guys that's not pharmacists. Alleged illegal sales that Mouton is being singled out for in his capacity as the responsible pharmacist at Traders. But people with inside knowledge of the pharma value group aren't buying that version. Can he say that he didn't know? No, he can't say that. He told the world how Scalum Nico were making more profit out of the codeine sales. It wasn't cross because of the, the codeine sales, it was cross of the money he didn't get. In other words, the insider says Stradum accused Mouton of skimming money from the top of illicit sales. Initially, Mouton offered Stradum a settlement in lieu of the disputed sales. You were willing to pay him money? To get Mr. Stradum out of your life? You're willing to pay anything, sir? But they didn't settle, and Stradum pushed ahead with the criminal case, appointing certified forensic consultants in June this year to get to the bottom of the matter and to establish the total financial loss. But that wasn't the first time he'd appointed forensic auditors. Uh, my name is Karat Lau. Uh, I'm a practicing advocate in Pretoria, but also involved in forensic investigations. When I started there on the 17th of, of April, the day after that, I requested certain documents via email, but I, I never got that uh, up until today. They didn't want me to, to, to have access to all the documents. They wanted me to focus on only the specific documents that was provided. Advocate Lowe walked away from the investigation, convinced the alleged transgressions were much more complex to be the work of just a single employee. So Hannes can say that was alles Nikumuton. No, I saw Nikani. No, that Nikumuton weg is, he had the codeine for Kuppe angegaan. And that gaan nog steeds aan. We've spent months working on this story, gathering evidence, speaking to different inside sources, and interrogating documents. As our investigation progressed, we realized that our covert over-the-counter sales pointed to the tip of the iceberg. The paper trail led to apparent criminality that came after Mouton's departure. These are printouts of cash sale slips, all from July 2023 a year after Mouton left the group. These slips are sales for 200 bottles of Benelin with codeine, another for 500, and wait for it, this one for 1,020 bottles. You'll notice there aren't any details of the buyers. It's just a straight up cash sale that went through the till at the Sunnyside Farmer Value Pharmacy, not the wholesale division, traders. These sales must have been done to a person walking into a pharmacy. This is legitimate cash sale invoices. Remember, a retail pharmacy is not allowed to sell in bulk by law. So on face value, these transactions appear illegal. What do you think of the quantities? It's, it's, it's absurd. You can, you can come to your own conclusion that this was an illegal sale 
to someone that was not supposed to buy these things, someone that's not a registered pharmacy, and, and it, it, the invoice speaks for itself. The South African Health Products Regulatory Authority, or SAPRA, is meant to keep tabs on dodgy medicine sales. Daphne Fafudi is the head of regulatory compliance. Take a look at these cash slips. We have purchases of ranging from 80 bottles right up to 1,000 bottles at a time. And those are cash slips. Coming from a pharmacy or a wholesale? Coming from Pharma Value Pharmacy. It's over-the-counter cash slips. A pharmacy cannot sell to anybody other than a patient. This is not treating a patient. This is wholesaling. These transactions took place when none other than Hannes Stradum was the responsible pharmacist on record at that particular pharmacy. This insider isn't surprised. I beheer the codeine. I say for wie word it verkoop. I say for what the price word it verkoop. In his written response, Stradum told us the pharmacy in Esselin Street is co-located with the trader's warehouse for wholesale sales. But while they share the same registered address, the pharmacy and the wholesaler are separate entities with two different company registration numbers, two different VAT numbers, and have two different licenses with the South African Pharmacy Council. Stradom further claimed the cash slips were sales to pharmacies who don't have a trading account with traders and therefore paid in cash at the pharmacy. He states the cash received is transferred from the pharmacy to the wholesaler system. That's odd because these sales to other pharmacies don't appear on traders' stock ledgers and it's not standard procedure in terms of pharmacy council regulations. It's only once you begin to scrutinize the wholesale division's stock ledgers that some of these orders begin to stand out. In May 2022, records show a Dr. Hienes ordered 14,400 bottles of Benelin C. And then another 2,400, less than a month later. At that rate, he was selling 685 bottles every day for 21 days straight. Suspicious, to say the least. We tracked down Dr. Hienes at his practice, not far from the Pharma Value store in Sunnyside. Do you sell cough medicine to patients? No, I haven't got the dispensary license. You know, Doc, Pharma Value's records show that you bought 14,400 bottles. Uh, bottles of cough medicine from them with codeine in, and, and that you <laughs> sold out in 21 days. I wish I can have that uh, money to buy that amount and sell it, and then I can make a few bucks. Who do you suspect it really was? Somebody in the Pharma Value Group. The explanation is simple, according to the insider. Dr. Hienes was being used as a front for suspected black market sales. This is illegal on his name, and then what happens as the contact comes back, then he pays this on that specific invoice in, to say sure that the invoice is paid. In other words, on paper, a big order went to Dr. Hienes, but it was not actually delivered to him. It's alleged to be the standard MO, with some pharmacies apparently also used to hide dodgy sales. Our sources flagged a number of big orders that went to a pharmacy in Caltonville as suspicious. So we're hitting the road to go see for ourselves. This is the exact address on the invoice. While there is a pharmacy here, it's not the name that appears on the Pharma Value records. We're just checking, this isn't pharmacy at Spa in Caltonville, yeah. right? No, it's not. It's different. This is an independent one. How long have you guys been here? It's about two weeks now. So the plot thickens. So, okay, so this is a new pharmacy, but apparently the people next door at the video shop may have more information. The shop was closed, yes. No one trading, nothing. Here's an invoice showing that they bought goods from Pharma Valley traders in May this year. But you're saying they were closed? That doesn't make sense, no, it's, it's impossible. The shop closed in October 2020, 
but apparently still received orders in 2022 and 2023. The evidence suggests that these orders were also a cover. We actually charged the sales to legal entities, but where the stock was delivered was not where the invoice was charged to. The people that received the stock were not pharmacists. Did Mr. Stratum know that? Absolutely knows that. That's illegal. How do you sell to a pharmacy that is closed? Where has that gone to? Because if it, it says closed pharmacy, then it's likely to have gone into the illicit market. We know that orders aren't being delivered to Carltonville nor to Dr. Hiennes. So where are they going? Wie het anders, waar naartoe die koudien eindelijk gaan? Hy weet, want hy geer die adres. Excuse? Hy geer die adres waar het afgelever word. Hy doen nie die aflevering voordat die kontant of die geld nie in sy rekening is nie. Maar dit klink soos een drakdeel. Dit doen. So who are the mystery receivers? Private investigator Andre Putter traced some of the suspect orders. It's delivered to private addresses, uh, not pharmacies. And they do that secretly. They sell it in bulk to uh, people that's not pharmacists, to members of the public. Remember, a wholesaler like Pharma Value Traders can only sell to a pharmacy, pharmacist, or dispensing medical practice registered with the South African Pharmacy Council. Sales to anyone else are illegal. One of the alleged receivers put their ID is Zimbabwean Tene Murumbechi, whose company, Dream Live Holdings, deposited money into Pharma Values Traders' bank account. This is one of the registered business addresses for Tene Murumbechi. We'll try to go speak to him. We're trying to speak to the person who lives at number 97, Mr. Tene Murumbechi. Tene? Yes. Ah, it's not staying here anymore. Did he have a business here or did he stay here? No, he doesn't. They were they have moved here. But it wasn't quite a dead end. Butter had another lead. He received uh, at least one delivery that I know of, a couple of thousand of bottles, and it was delivered to a storage unit, not in a shop or a pharmacy, a storage unit. Some farmer value drivers confirm the storage facility is in Midrand. Let's try to see what they know. We have a name of the person who may have been, been renting a unit here. Uh, his surname is Murumbechi. He may be previously. Wait, is it Tanai? Tanai Murumbechi, that's the guy. It seems Murumbechi has some explaining to do. I'm calling you because you have been implicated in the purchase of codeine from Farmer Value from Mr. Hannes Stradum. Okay. What is your relationship with Mr. Hannes Stradum? Oh, the relationship. Hannes, uh, did you call? Did, did you manage to speak with Hannes? Already? Yes, I did. Let me verify with Hannes first, then I'll come back to you. Clearly, there's some kind of connection. There, there, there are different things that I used to buy there. I used to buy masks in that time of, of COVID. That wasn't during COVID. That was during 2022. That was long after COVID. You know, you know that one is a farmer. So, t can you tell me, are you a pharmacist? He's dropped the call. The answer is no. Tanei Murumbechi is not a pharmacist, and he doesn't own a pharmacy in South Africa. In a WhatsApp message, he insisted that his company is above board and that he has invoices to prove it. Murumbechi also claimed not to know what codeine syrup is. In a written response, Pharma Values group owner Hannes Stradum said all of these incidents were being investigated. But the buck stops with him. Armed with our crate of illegally sold codeine and leaked documents, we went looking for answers. We'd like to speak to you. There are serious allegations that you're supplying the codeine black market, sir. It was almost like he couldn't hear me. We'd like to speak to you about your business, sir. We have evidence here that you were selling more than one bottle of cough mixture at a time. And then it felt Sir, like Stradum couldn't see me, just, desperately like avoiding eye you contact. Think. You know selling more than one bottle is, is a criminal offense. This is criminal. As he rushed in to attend to inspectors from the pharmacy council in Sapra, we waited outside. 
We've just heard that Hannes Stratum has left. We've been waiting here for two hours. He had his people posted at the door to watch us, and he was in such a rush to evade us that he jumped into a VW and left his Ferrari. He ignored our calls and blocked us on WhatsApp. While Stratum waits for the forensic investigation to be finalized, the insiders we spoke to on and off the record are clear. The answers lie with Hannes Stratum himself. That business is run by what he wants. It doesn't matter what law is in South Africa. That's his law. When he tells you something to do, you will do it. You walk not in the ground. You walk not for a friend. You have your cup on the ground, and you make of your nothing. Everyone in the company knew about it. it. It wasn't just me and Mr. Stratum. Everyone in the company knew about everything. Following the investigation, SAPRA said since they found activities that contravene the Medicines Act, they're pursuing legal action. Codeine is an opioid that has been a game changer in managing pain, but as our insert makes clear, it's sometimes abused.